Hi everyone, and this is my video. Uh, well, I got a question of why doesn't my son sound like you, and, and I don't know if it was a comment or phrased in a question, but I thought that it would make a interesting video. So obviously I haven't met um, the person that asked the question, and I haven't met their son, so I don't know exactly why I don't sound like their son, but I have a, a few different ideas about why someone, or why my speech can sound different than um, just some random um, kid's speech. And the, um, the first thing is that adult cluttering is probably a lot different than child cluttering. And I don't have any recordings of myself um, actually before I was 30 probably, and so, um, or maybe like 35, but I, um, so, so I can't actually, or, and, and I only, um, I don't really have memories of what my speech sounded like, so I have no idea what I sounded like when I was, uh, when I was a kid, and I, um, I don't know like how different that I am, but I know that I'm really, really different because I've um, worked a lot and tried to change my speech and learned a lot of techniques. And so, and so just, um, just because this boy is a child and I am an adult, I think, um, I think that could account for a lot of of it and then a lot of times adults have like learned behaviors like a lot of um, a lot of what I do I think is really helpful but it could be that I have some techniques that aren't actually improving my speech that um, that I kind of learned as like defense defense mechanisms where a child isn't gonna have isn't going to have that they're gonna have more like raw pure um, uncorrected speech and my speech um, my speech because I've been working on it and probably like some some of my techniques have been great some of my techniques um, I'll eventually have to unlearn so so um, so so anyway that's um, that's probably um, one of the biggest things that I can think of the second thing is that on a video camera or or basically like anytime someone is recording uh, like like um, camera like this cell phone um, tape recorder someone with cluttering their speech and like my speech is just way 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 different than without um, without it turned on and I've um, I've noticed that because I've, I've I've been doing a lot of interviews with um, folks with cluttering and it's really interesting as soon as um, as soon as I turn the recording off on the interview then their speech and I, I'm guessing my speech just um, goes either down um, um, down if you me if you look at it from level of fluency or up if you look at it in terms of cluttering disfluencies, um, that um, th that I notice that there's a just a marked difference between when the camera's on and when the camera's off. So um, it's really really hard for me to speak um, to speak normal, and that's kind of my next point is that I actually don't have a normal speech. Um, and and that kind of uh, that kind of bugs me. Like if somebody um, like if I'm struggling to say something, then one of the things that I've heard a lot throughout my life is, "Oh, Joseph, just say what's on your mind. Just um, just say what you're thinking." And the problem is, it's not. It doesn't really translate into words. And and um, uh, well, um, anyway, my uh, my point is that when I'm speaking then I'm always using different techniques to be able to um, to speak. And it, um, I was I was like 33 when I learned how to speak. And, and um, not not literally, but when I learned how to talk in a way that I could give a presentation like this, or that I can could have like a back and forth interaction where like I say something, someone else says something, I say something, someone else says something. Um, just my my um, my speech wasn't fluid enough before then to be able to do that. And so so I was 33 when that happened. Uh, when I had like that breakthrough moment where I could like start speaking kind of normally. And so, so I'm I'm 49 now. I was 33, so that's like 16 uh, um, 16 years. So, so it's still like relatively recent in my in my life. And 
pretty much all the time when I'm talking, I'm like thinking through, okay, use this technique, use this, this technique to get out speech. Like even if, um, even if I'm not being video recorded, even if, um, even if I'm just talking to friends, I'm, I'm still like playing through, okay, um, use this, use this technique, use this technique. And so I don't think, um, and, and I don't know if it's really possible for me to stop thinking about all those techniques and just like give like what my normals, uh, what, what my normal speech is. But, but anyway, my, uh, um, my point is that I don't really have a normal speech. And so where probably your son is, um, is still speaking in a normal speech because in, in his normal speech, because he hasn't gone through all the same things that I did, hasn't. Um, and so, and so what, what you're, um, what you're listening with me isn't my normal speech, but the product of like years and years of me trying to fix it and and the and and the techniques that I've learned are so good that I just I can't I can't go back like I think even if I tried to like trying to speak whatever my normal speech was um, my next point is about that there are two types of cluttering and so it could be that your son has one type of cluttering and I have another type of cluttering or, or I guess um, and and I want to read from Yvonne von Zollen's book and Isabel. Um, so it's written by Yvonne von Zollen and Isabel K. Rachel or Rachel. And so she uh, she talks about the two different types or subtypes of cluttering. And I'm going to just read the two types. So I'm I'm syntactic, and it could be that your son is phonological. Syntactic cluttering refers to problems in grammatical encoding and word retrieval at a fast speech rate. Such symptoms occur more frequently in linguistically complex situations. The problems are manifested by normal disfluencies such as word and phrase repetitions, interjections, hesitations, and revisions. For example, I am very busy, we're working uh, on my paper uh, thesis, instead of, I am very busy working on my thesis. So that's the first type. Second type, phonological. Phonological cluttering, according to von Zollen, refers to problems in phonological encoding and is characterized by word structure errors, for example, coalescence, telescoping, or syllable sequencing errors at a fast speech rate, especially in multisyllabic words. Similarly to syntactic cluttering, symptoms of phonological cluttering occur more frequently in linguistically complex speaking situations. For example, probably we will keep tomorrow instead of probably we will meet tomorrow. So if you want a great example of syntactic versus phonological cluttering, then the video interview where uh, with me and CL is an excellent example because she is more um, phonological cluttering and I'm more syntactic um, cluttering and so, so that could be that could be another um, reason. So, my uh, my mom is actually from England, and my dad is from the U.S. And so, I was born in America, and um, but but ba- um, basically raised by my mom. And so, my speech doesn't even sound normal for an American. And. Um, and and there aren't uh, there aren't too many um, half half British half American folks out there. Um, there, um, there. There are some, but that could be a reason why my um, speech sounds different um, too. Um, oh, and and then another thing is so so with with cluttering, we don't um, we don't we don't really have any cluttering role models that. That I can say, okay, this guy also has cluttering, but he um, speaks a lot more fluidly than I do, so I can copy some of the stuff that he does. And um, and so um, also be, 
um, also like there aren't any cluttering groups um, where where like as opposed to stuttering, pretty much every city in the wor or every big city in the world has a um, stuttering group where you can go and talk with folks with stuttering. Where with cluttering, then we don't have that, um, and I'm not even sure if there's ever been like a group of five folks with cluttering that have actually spoke um, to each other at the same um, time before, like, f like five or more um, people with that. And so uh, my, point, uh, my point with that is that with, uh, like, like in a group, if 10 people with stuttering get together, then they can listen and say, oh, hey, you're doing that. I'm, I'm going to improve my speech in this way uh, because, because I can tell that it's working for you. And, and then w uh, with, cl with cluttering, we don't have that. And so like the person, uh, the person or people that I look at as saying, hey, I have good speech and then I'm, that I'm modeling my speech after is probably going to be way, way different than the person that Rutger is, mo is, is, is saying, oh, hey, he's got, um, he's got good speech and he's modeling his um, speech after, where I think if there was more of a community of folks with cluttering, then we would kind of develop a lot of the same like techniques together and um, and and then and then people with cluttering would kind of sound more similar, uh, um, but but in a but in a good way. Um, and okay, I had a, I had another thought, but I hadn't um, actually taken notes on it, so I'm gonna just move on. Um, oh, and and like. Like one of my um, my upcoming video is going to be on um, Jeff Goldblum, and does does Jeff Goldblum have cluttering? Um, I made one on Elon Musk, and does Elon Musk have cluttering? And and with both of those people, um, they have a lot of stuff that I can um, copy and like integrate into my life to make my speech go from like this level up to this level. Um, and and pretty and pretty quickly, but 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 um, but there's not like um, techniques or whatever that um, that are that are really being shared. Like um, that that the people are really really quickly like learning together about how to get um, better at at cluttering. Um, and then the other the other thing is kind of similar is that cluttering isn't really well defined, and and actually um, that's not actually um, literally true because there are three or four really well defined definitions of cluttering, but I guess what I mean is that there's no like consensus definition of cluttering, and um, and also because cluttering is still pretty early on then uh, um, early on in people and researchers being aware of it, then the cluttering definition may actually change and, e and evolve. And, um, and so um, just, um, just, as, an, just an, as, a, as an example, um, Dessa Weiss um, had a definition of cluttering where he said that lack of awareness is a critical part of cluttering. And at that point in 1960, when he was writing it, I think there were no people like me that knew, oh, hey, I have cluttering and, and knew, knew that about my speech. And so him writing that down as his definition was exactly true in 1960. But now with the internet and people um, and with speech pathologists diagnosing people and people um, doing a bunch of research and figuring stuff out on their own, then there are a lot of people with cluttering that have a relatively high um, awareness that they are cluttering. So so anyway, um, definitions just um, um, definitions evolve, and then especially in something like cluttering, then the definition will probably continue um, um, continue to evolve. And also, um, like right now, um, the defin the definition or definitions aren't clear enough so that you can say, okay, these people are these people 100% have cluttering. Um, these people over here, they kind of do cluttering, but they're not, uh, um, they're not like enough to diagnose. So we, um, so, so they're kind of on the edge. They're, they're not actually like cluttering. And then these people here also kind of have cluttering, but in a completely different way. 
Um, and so there's not really a consensus what is cluttering, what isn't cluttering. And so right now, basically, uh, basically lots and lots of people get um, get and will probably continue to get grouped into um, cluttering or um, well, what's uh, what's probably happening now is that they get diagnosed with other stuff, not actual like um, cluttering when they're uh, when when a cluttering diagnosis would be helpful. So anyway, um, that's um, that um, that's a handful of different things about why my speech might be different than someone else's speech um, with cluttering, and then especially like in a um, especially a kid that's still like learning and growing. And then um, my hope is then one of the reasons that I make videos because when I uh, first learned about it then I didn't have any really good resources and then and and I think oh that um, that was um, that was my other point is that right now if you go to 20 different speech pathologists they're probably going to use 20 different techniques about how to how to improve your speech um, because there's just not a lot of um, consensus and like um, not really an established way of, of do this, do this, do this, and then um, a um, someone with cutter, someone with cuttering's speech improves. So the more um, the, the the more that happens, the more that researchers fig uh, researchers and speech pathologists figure out really really good techniques. Then the more that people can progress at a at a more like predictable and quick uh, rate. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, thanks very much for watching.